Hi, this is Tab Guy. Playing another game of Optimal Yahtzee here. I'm narrating this live, so I don't know what's going to happen, but I hope it's um, exciting. Some difficult choices to be made. I'm going to explain my decision-making process along the way, and hope you learn something. Okay, first roll. Got a pair of fours here, and normally that would be what you go for, but always be on the lookout for the two, three, four, five. That's the double-ended small straight. Um, one, two, three, four. I would not take here, or three, four, five, six, because they're only open on one end, and it's hard to turn that from a small straight into a large straight. But the two, three, four, five is special. If you get a one or a six, you get that large straight. And I hear you have two chances to do it. And a lot of times, this works out really well. You get the large straight. There it is, first roll. So scoring a large straight. Love when I get a large straight early because uh, one of the hardest parts of playing optimal Yahtzee is knowing when to go for the small straight or when to go for the large straight late in the game if you need it. Uh, it's important to get small straights and large straights. They're the uh, they're good steady contributors to a, a high average score. Small straight because you usually get it and large straight because it's worth 40 points and you can get it most games. But you just have to know when to go for it late in the game. If you've already got it on the first roll, don't worry about it anymore. You can just focus on going for your three of kinds and, and Yahtzees. Alright, second roll. i got a pair of sixes and a pair of threes. Um, obvious choice here, you just go with the higher pair. When they're both open on top, choose the higher one. All right, second roll didn't help much. I'm just going to stick with the pair of sixes here. And did not get a three. Um, we three of a kind on sixes. So looking at the score for chance, it's a 19. And I have a one. And the rule of thumb here is if the chance score is 20 or more, Take out on chance, otherwise take the one in the upper section. That's like your second chance. You got one chance here and second chance here because uh, scratching or, or taking one on aces only puts you two points behind pace here. That's easily made up. I just have to make one extra two, three, four, anything, and I'm back on pace for the bonus. All right, pair of fours. And I have a pair of ones and a pair of fours. Uh, if ones were open, you might consider going for the full house here. Uh, really not worth it. Fours are, are pretty valuable. It'd be better to get a third four and score it on the upper section. Wow, I got more than three fours. I got four fours. So here you could take four of a kind, right? But uh, when you get four of something that's open on top, uh, Generally, the best thing to do is take it on the upper section. Unless you've already got like a four sixes and four fives, you really don't need any more fours, then you could take it on, on four of a kind. But in this case, especially I'm, I'm behind pace, and now by taking the four fours, I'm ahead of pace. Definitely want to take it on the upper section. Okay. Got a pair of ones, don't need ones, already filled in. Uh, three fours, good for going for a small straight. I'm going to take the six, because I need sixes, and sixes are good for three of a kind, four of a kind, chance, whatever happens here. Uh, six is going to contribute a high point total. Hmm, so I went from six to a pair of twos. I will switch to the pair of twos. Um, a lot of times on the second roll, if it's looking bad, like you're not going to get three of something, you want to switch to a lower pair. In this case, it's the only pair I have is the twos. Uh, but that way it kind of minimizes the damage if you end up only getting a pair. So I am uh, two points ahead of pace on top. If I were to settle for the two twos, I'd be back on pace. Not a problem. And that's what happens. So here I do have 19. Again, uh, 20 or more is a good chance. 19, better to take the two twos. And that was two behind pace, two ahead of pace, now I'm back right on pace. So that's fine. Three threes. Awesome. I need threes. Three, three, four, five. And keep the three threes. Got a fourth three. Nice. So three ahead of pace again. Still going to need three fives and three sixes. But I guess if I get... Uh, Four fives, I only need two sixes. So, you know, it's good to be good to be ahead of pace. Okay, threes, fours, and a six. 
Okay. Six is good. Because I need it on the upper section. Uh, but I'm going to say pair of fours is better. Because it's closer to getting three of a kind or four of a kind. Four is not that much less than a six. So, uh, not sacrificing much in points uh, in terms of three of a kind. So, I'm going to go with the pair of fours here. Kind of a tough choice. Oh, boy. Okay, here you could consider going for the full house, but what's the backup plan? You know, if it doesn't come through, taking this on chance, and it's probably not going to amount to much. So I'm going to stick with the pair of fours, because they, uh, at least they'll contribute to a chance, more so than the threes would. All right, got the three fours. Don't need fours on top, but this does barely qualify as a three of a kind. Uh, 15 points. Not really happy with that total, but got out of a tight situation there. So that's fine. Alright, this is good. Got a pair of fives and a pair of threes. A pair of fives is something I need. Try to get that upper section finished off. Okay. A pair of fives not built up to three yet. Got a three, four, five. Could try to build that into a small straight, but I really need fives and sixes. So uh, I gotta keep trying for them. Nice. Four fives. So this is that situation I was talking about. Now that I've got four fives, I'm actually so far ahead of pace I can settle for two sixes now and still get the upper section bonus. Just ten points away now. So that's uh, that's going to happen. Two sixes is really easy to get. In fact, I can concentrate on getting some other stuff down here because I know I can always roll a couple sixes late in the game. Well, there's that two, three, four, five again. Always be on the lookout for that. Um, in this case, don't need a large straight. I do need a small straight. A pair of threes aren't that great. So I'm just going to settle for the small straight on the first roll. Just going to forego rolls two and three. Score that as a small straight immediately. Now I'm done with straights, I can just focus on getting triples and four of a kind stuff. Hmm. Okay. If this were later in the game, I'd go for the six. Because I'd be want to get those two sixes. But remember I said two sixes are pretty easy to roll? So better to go for the pair of fives now, try to get a four of a kind or full house. And I'll get the sixes later if I have to. And there's the full house. It's also the pair of sixes. So I could I could actually score the sixes now and get the upper section bonus. I could keep the three fives and go for a four of a kind. But I'm going to stop right here on roll two, take the full house. Remember, that's all I was setting out to do by keeping the fives, going for a four of a kind or a full house. If you get one or the other, take it. Oh boy, a pair of fives again. No sixes. So that's definitely what I'm going to do. If I don't get the four of a kind, uh, fives are nice and high. I'll be able to take a good chance here. Okay. Didn't get another five, but I did get two sixes. Two sixes is what I need on the upper section. So I'm going to score this on the upper section no matter what happens unless I get a Yahtzee. If I get four sixes here, probably going to score it on, on the upper section. But I only need two. Got them in my pocket. Got a third one. That's great. Got a nice score on the upper section here. All right, heading into the home stretch here. I need a four of a kind, Yahtzee, and Chance. Four of a kind, Yahtzee, both pretty hard to get. Uh... Hopefully I'm rolling with fives and sixes so I can take them on chance. I don't get, uh, I don't come up with a Yahtzee. So here, sixes, perfect. So I'll go for a four of a kind. If I don't get it, it's going on chance. All right, stick with the sixes. Didn't get a four of a kind or a Yahtzee, but that's a nice chance. 25 points. All right, this is looking like one of those games where I end up scratching four of a kind and Yahtzee. Let's see what happens here. Hey, four of a kind. All right. Let's see if I can turn this into a Yahtzee. No, oh, one more chance. Oh, actually, I should stop here. You can consider taking this on four of a kind right now, right? Because chances are our next roll, that six is going to turn into like a two or something. I'm going to end up losing points on the four of a kind. But because there's only one die that I'm rolling, it's a one in six chance of turning this into a Yahtzee. That's worth taking the risk. So optimal Yahtzee here, optimal Yahtzee here says... Be aggressive. Go for the Yahtzee. Didn't get it. Lost a couple points. That's okay. 
And final turn is the Yahtzee roll. I didn't get a pair. Uh, now here you could roll everything or you could choose to keep one. The odds are all the same, doesn't matter. The way the computer does this one is it chooses the lowest um, the lowest die and holds that one. I'm going to do that just so I match uh, the results of the optimal Yahtzee player. Doesn't really matter. Like, you, like I said, you can roll everything here or you can choose to keep the six. It really doesn't matter. I'm just doing this so I get a nice clean output on the uh, on the analysis tab. Hey, switch to threes. Okay, actually have a decent chance at a Yahtzee here. And didn't get it. So that's a 265. That's a better than average total. And I believe this was an optimal game. I will confirm right now by clicking the Analyze button. It comes up over here on the Analysis tab. And I can see, yes, that was an optimal game. If it weren't, there would be um, there would be some output here in these right columns saying what the optimal solitaire Yahtzee player did and how it was better than what you did and then this number would be greater than zero me meaning how many more points you could have had on average if you had made optimal choices but because I made all optimal choices this number is 0, 0.00 alright so that was, uh, that was a pretty good game and uh, that's a, yet another example of optimal Yahtzee game it can be done